do you want to watch? Mm, how about Two Love Is I Can Cody? All right, yeah. This like totally happened to us freshman year. OMG, yes. Like I totally forgot about that. You're talking about Winter Wonderland 2K13, right? Yes, like when your dad wanted you to go with his boss's son, Dominic. Ew, yeah, but I wanted to go with Lance. He's like totally hot. Yeah, he is, but Dominic is like even hotter. We were totally a thing, but then your dad made you go with Dominic and I was hashtag pissed. Rough life, bro, but I wanted to go with Lance. But it's okay, because after your dad took pictures, you totally ditched Dominic and went with Lance, and I told Dominic, and he was hashtag pissed. Yeah, but at the dance, you whipped out your totally sick dance moves, and you wooed them both. You hashtag ho. Sorry, I have sick tricks, bro. But Lance is such a good guy, he came back to me when you left me down in the dumps. I mean, it's okay, because we both ended up with the guys we wanted. That was such a confusing night. Oh my gosh, I wish there was a schmoop page for it. It was like as if Shakespeare wrote it. He did. All right. Hmm, now that I think about it, it's like exactly like one of his plays. Hmm, yeah, like Midnight Winter or something? You mean Midsummer Night's Dream? And bingo was his name -o. Actually, his name was William Shakespeare and he was a hashtag great guy. I know nothing about the guy. Wow, funny you mentioned it. I know everything about the guy. I'll tell you about him. William Shakespeare was born on April 23rd, 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, United Kingdom, which is about 100 miles northwest of London. He was born to John and Mary Shakespeare Shakespeare was the fourth child out of eight children, but sadly only five of those children lived to be adults. Shakespeare grew up in a poor family. At the age of five, he went to an all-boys school named King's New School in Stratford. They primarily taught grammar there. By the age of seven, Shakespeare was speaking Latin. The combination of rigorous grammar and Latin lessons influenced him to write plays. When Shakespeare turned 18, he married 26-year-old local farmer Anne Hathaway. She was already pregnant at the time of their wedding with their daughter, Susanna. Two years later, they had a set of twins named Hamnet and Judith. Hamnet died at age 11, and this influenced Shakespeare to write the play Hamlet. Between the years of 1585 and 1592, Shakespeare basically fell off the face of the earth. Scholars called this the Lost Years. During the Lost Years, he started his acting career and became a playwright. In 1597, 15 out of 37 plays were published. In 1599, Shakespeare finished the construction of the Globe Theatre, which he designed himself. Many of his best plays were performed here. In 1613, the roof of the Globe burnt to the ground and they rebuilt it in, for in 1614, commonly known as Globe II. Shakespeare died on April 23rd, 1616. He was buried in the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford. Inscribed on his tombstone was, Good friend Jesus' sake, forbear. To dig the sut enclosed here, Blessed be the man that spares these stones, And cursed be he that moves my bones. Okay, honestly, how did you know all that? Swoop taught me everything I need to know in life. But I still don't understand how this relates to Winter Wonderland 2K13. I mean, it's simple. Well, first I should tell you about the characters. First, there's Hermia. She is introduced as the obedient daughter of Aegeus. Her father wants her to marry Demetrius, but she has fallen in love with Lysander. In the play, Hermia could be mistaken for being young and foolishly in love. However, the whole thing is put into perspective when her father wants her killed. After her father complains, she is brought to Duke Theseus and is quick to stand up for herself. 
Hermia is a bold character and is similar to one of Shakespeare's heroines, Rosalind, in As You Like It. Both of these girls are similar in the fact that they are willing to break traditions to take a chance on love. Then there is Lysander. Lysander is Hermia's boyfriend, and he really wants to get married. Since Hermia's dad does not approve of Lysander, he runs off with Hermia to elope. In the woods, he's drugged by mistake when Puck squeezes the love juice in his eyes, causing him to love to love Helena. Until Puck finally gives him an antidote, making him falling in love with Hermia. Next is Helena. She is not loved. Because of this, Helena often takes time to think about the nurture of love and spends all her time in self-pity. Unlike the other characters who speak majestically about love, Helena is prone to generalized statements. Helena best exemplifies unrequited love. It seems Helena has spent so much time rationalizing why she isn't loved that when the real thing comes along, real or not, she can't embrace it and enjoy it for what it is. She becomes even more self-pitying when she believes that she's gone from a loner to a joke. Even at the end of the play, when Demetrius still loves her, Helena is skeptical. The last of the four lovers who get caught up in the fairy magic is Demetrius. Demetrius is the guy Hermia's father wants her to marry. He isn't exactly a complex character, however, he does have a strong attitude toward love. In the beginning of the play, he is insisting that Hermia marries him even though she does not love him. Then we find out that Demetrius was once in love with Helena, but left her for Hermia. This proves that Demetrius often acts unpredictably. He is pretty abusive and intensive to Helena when he leaves her. He leaves her first by saying that he never loved her and never will love her. Then Demetrius goes on saying that looking at Helena makes him sick and that she's too clingy and promiscuous. He then tells her that he hopes that she gets eaten by wild beasts and leaves her in the woods to be eaten by said wild beasts. Demetrius' character reminds us that love can be cruel. Oberon is the king of the fairies and ruler of Puck, his fairy minion. He is often very compassionate because he feels sorry for Helena. He uses his magic to help her win Demetrius over and goes and goes out of his way to make sure that all the couples are happy. On the other hand, he can also be power hungry and uses Puck to hum- humiliate him. Either way, it is undeniable that Oberon likes a good joke. Now that we know more about the characters, tell me more about the story. The play begins with Duke Theseus excited for his wedding with Hippolyta. Aegeus, the father of Hermia, comes into the scene complaining that Hermia wants to be with Lysander. Aegeus wants Hermia to marry Demetrius, but the Duke agrees that the father should choose who she marries. Aegeus gives Hermia the ultimatum. She can either marry Demetrius and live a happy life under his control, she will be executed, or she can become a nun. She is given four days to decide. Hermia leaves and talks with Lysander about going to the forest and running away together where her father's rule can affect her. Hermia then tells Helena, her best friend, that she's going to run away with Lysander. Hermia talks about how miserable she is with Demetrius. However, the more Hermia talks about him, the more Helena falls for Demetrius and wants to be with him. Helena then goes to, to, to Demetrius and tells him that Hermia and Lysander are going to meet in the forest and run away that night. Demetrius goes into the forest to try to find Hermia, while Helen hopes that since she brought Demetrius to Hermia, who is with Lysander, that Demetrius will fall in love with her. Oberon, the king of the fairies, sees Demetrius and Helena arguing and tells tells his fairy minion, Puck, to go put a love potion on Demetrius. This brings us to our scene, Act 3. This falls out better than I could devise, but hast thou lashed an Athenian's eyes with a love juice that I bid thee do? Unto them sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked of force, she must be eyed. Stand close, this is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. 
What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid a love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprison must enforce ensue, some true love turned, and not a false turned true. The fate all rules that one man holding troth a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. I'll fancy sick, she is pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion see thou bring her here, I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with a cupid's archery, sink an apple in his eye with the love of the doth espy. With the shine of his glorious as Venus of the sky, when thou wakest, if she be by, beg her for her remedy. Captain of the fairy band, Helena's here at hand, and the youth mistooken by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond page and see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Shh, stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we'll two at once woo one. That must needs be sports alone. And those things do best please me, that befall prosperously. Why should you think that I should woo and scorn? Scorn and desertion never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. And vow so born in their nativity, all truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you? Bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more, when truth kills, O holy fray. These vows are Hermia's, will you give her o'er? Weigh oath and oath, and will weigh nothing. Your vows to her and me, put in two scales, will even weigh as both light as tails? I had no judgment when her I swore, nor none in my mind, now give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, he love not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect divine, to what my love shall I compare at thine eye? Crystal is muddy, oh how ripe in show, thy lips those kissing cherries tempting grow. To pure congealed white high Taurus snow, fanned with eastern wind turns to a crow. When thou holdest up thy hand, oh let me kiss this princess of pure white, the seal of blood. So since Oberon put the potion on Demetrius, he falls in love with Helena. When both boys tell Helena they love her, she gets upset because she thinks it's a joke. Hermia wakes up and sees the boys fawning over Helena, and she gets mad because no one likes her. Then Puck puts the force into pitch darkness and makes everyone fall asleep. After that, he puts the potion on Lysander, and when he wakes up, he's in love with Hermia. Duke Theseus walks into the forest to pick out a spot for his plays when he sees the four of them sleeping. He yells at them to wake up and when everyone wakes up they're in love with who they're supposed to be in love with. Demetrius and Helena, Lysander and Hermia. The Duke tells them they all will be married that afternoon. At the play there has been many present themes. The most dominant theme is love. This is a reoccurring theme in many of Shakespeare's plays. We see love when everyone is trying to get the right person to fall in love with him or her. However, love is an obstacle for everyone. Throughout the play, in their pursuit of love, the characters have a tendency to act irrationally and foolish. After they get a love potion put on them, the characters fall in and out of love erratically. For example, the queen falls in love with a donkey. Shakespeare suggests through this play that love really is an obstacle that can dramatically change everyone at any second. Another theme that we found in Midsummer Night's Dream is transformation. Along with the physical, there are many emotional transformations that Shakespeare constructed. An obvious physical change is that the play happens with a minor character named Bottom. Bottom transforms physically when he gets turned into a donkey. Not only are characters going through physical transformations, but they are also going through mental changes when they constantly are falling in and out of love with each other. They are constantly changing their minds on deciding where they want to live and who they want to love. A minor theme that we see in the play is gender roles. 
This is present when Hermia fights for her right to marry the man she loves rather than the man her father wants her to marry. Throughout the play, Shakespeare also questions some stereotypes about traditional gender roles when it comes to romance. For example, while men are usually expected to be aggressive, women are expected to remain passive and sensitive. Of course, A Midsummer Night's Dream shows us that this isn't necessarily always the case, especially when you get a love potion. Another form of gender, another form of gender tension is when a king and queen of fairies are at war with each other, enacting a battle of the sexes so intense that it disrupts the natural world. Overall, Shakespeare was really ahead of his time when challenging gender stereotypes. Wow, that's like exactly what happened to us at Winter Wonderland 2K13. I know, right? It's such a good play. I wonder what other people thought about it. Hmm. Well, it says here that Bob Corbett's review on Midsummer's Night Dream was indifferent. He thought the play was lighthearted and fun. However, he didn't like that there was no insight into the human emotions and feelings that are present in some of Shakespeare's other tragedies. Overall though, he thought it was a good read. Yeah, I can understand that, but personally, I really enjoyed Midsummer's Night Dream. Throughout reading it, it was so hard for me to put it down, and I really liked that it was a Shakespearean comedy and that everything worked out in the end. Obviously, the reading was a little hard to understand, but No Fear Shakespeare really helped me out. And at first, like, the names and relationships were really confusing. Yeah, I get that, but after the first act, it was kind of easier to understand, like, who wants to be with who. And I thought it was really fun, like, watching the relationships progress. And overall, it's been, like, my favorite Shakespeare play we've ever read. Me too. Hmm. Interesting. So, what do you want to watch next? Snoop Dogg!